Sometimes the most powerful learning experience is the one you wish never happened. There was one time I was going into, into Angoon and it was getting pretty low. I was at our minimums of 500 feet and everything and just looking a little lower up ahead. So I was thinking about turning around and thinking, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. And before I know it's too low, this is dumb. No sense keeping on in this. I know it's, I know it doesn't get any better further on. So I started my turn. And before I knew it, I shot right through my 180 degree heading, went 270 degrees all the way, and I was heading straight for the short line. I made it out, made it out fine. It wasn't, didn't ever get super close or anything. But it was a good wake up call of not, um, not getting too aggressive when you're down low like that. It was a very squally, snow showery day. It was December 5th, 1994. I got caught in a snow shower, got down low, uh, got myself into a bay, um, and just ran right into the head of the bay. The wreck is, is a very painful event. Uh, even if you're not involved in the wreck, it's, it's, a, it's just a, the most painful thing there is. So controlled flight into terrain, which means, long story short, you take a perfectly good airplane and fly it into either rising terrain or terrain in general. CFIT accidents usually uh, result in tragedy. The reason being is the airplane is usually, airplane or helicopter for that matter, is traveling at a, at a cruise speed or at the very least a maneuvering speed. Usually that does not is not conducive to a, a survivable type of an accident. Usually it's very traumatic, and unfortunately we see a lot of lives lost in the state of Alaska due to CFIT accidents. Train awareness systems in the airplanes, uh, train warning systems in the airplane, moving map displays, all of those things help to help mitigate um, a, a CFIT accident by knowing where you're at, knowing what your escape routes can be, knowing where lower elevation is. Now have just given yourself an additional method to, to escape from a bad situation. Really, we see guys that have flown in Alaska for 30 years having CFIT accidents. Um, you know, recently um, there has been an influx of CFIT accidents with the seasonal people that come up and a lot of these have never even seen this equipment before, have, um, have very little knowledge of the equipment and there's been numerous accidents where they found the equipment's actually been turned off because the pilot didn't understand it or, or didn't know how to use it formally. But, you know, when you bring pilots up and put them in that environment uh, without uh, good training. It's just bad for everybody. It's bad for aviation. It's bad for, you know, the safety environment that we try to operate in. Uh, when I hear that the pilot is new to the environment and he's had an accident, then I wonder how much time he's had out there with other people who are familiar with environment and training. If you try to use the technology for something well beyond what it was the capability and what it was designed for, that you would um, that you would basically get yourself in a situation that the equipment couldn't help you in. A great example of this was uh, aircraft would be flying low and they would get lower and lower. And finally, the train awareness feature of the map would just go red because they were so low. Being that low caused them to um, uh, cause them to actually exceed the protection envelope that the air, that the equipment was trying to provide them. That's why it's so important to be able to understand what the equipment does and how how it operates. My recommendation is to get training on the equipment that you have in your aircraft, even if it's a handheld system. If you understand how the equipment works and you understand what protection envelope you can operate in and you stay in that operational envelope, you're going to be safe. The simulators are all around the state. They're free. We provide um, pr provide anybody to set up on how to use them and we'll work with anybody on how to set up their own scenario-based training. You don't have to be a carrier. You don't have to be a member of a medallion. We just want them to use them. There's a lot of buttons on these on these uh, on these moving maps on the avionics and when you, once you push a button all the other all the other buttons do something different we've got simulators for all the avionics to get you familiar with the button pushing you know you're going to be better off in a, by a long shot if 
all the things you might routinely do out there are automatic for you. Train, train, check, check, check. I really think that scenario-based training is extremely important. In other words, use the simulators in the classroom, use the training device, the avionics devices, to set it up and fly the routes that you normally fly. If it's a really nice day out, still keep the equipment on and practice with it when it's a nice day, so when it's not such a nice day, you're very familiar with what you should be seeing and what should be going on. Direct twos, you can make user waypoints, you can have, uh, you, can, you can put in a IFR approach to somewhere, you can fly that VFR just to see it, and then you just, you just play with it every day. You know, I think probably the most important takeaway from, from this whole subject as far as CFIT accidents is being prepared. Being prepared with a, with a good weather briefing. Being prepared with your personal limitations as far as what your skill set is and, and where that skill set is. And then probably just as important is to have a plan B, have a backup. Uh, know exactly what you're going to do if you're if you do encounter less than stellar weather conditions. If the equipment shows that um, that you're too low, then you need to turn around and go back. If the equipment shows that you've got rising terrain ahead of you and there's no way that you can escape, turn around and go back. Um, if you are visually seeing these same things, that's a great time to turn around and go back. If you have a situation where you can't turn around and go back, then use the equipment to find a, a way out. Um, and if that way out happens to be, unfortunately, that you have to climb up through the clouds, you may have to do that. Your point of turning around should definitely not be when you're feeling uneasy. You should have, you know, clear um, thoughts about uh, what conditions you're going to turn around in so that you can do that um, when you're still feeling comfortable and you're not in any danger. If you're, if you're noticing that this is happening to you a lot, you need to look at this because that, that's, that's very dangerous. Um, behavior and you need to try, you need to pull it back a little bit there's just there's no doubt you know we yeah we've got a job to do and people are relying on their groceries and whatnot it's but, not worth their lives though well yeah and it's not worth your certificate either you know and if you fly at that standard all the time that's what our passengers expect that's what dispatchers expect and that's what i expect out of these guys so, so we put in all this avionics CFIT accidents are still happening, not as often. What, what, what else can we do? So pilot feedback is critical to be able to make sure that we certify the equipment and understand how it's going to be used and make sure that it's being uh, used properly and understand how we can best get the benefits out of that technology. At the end of the day, safety is paramount. Know your equipment and honestly assess whether you are using it properly. Utilize the many sources of training that are available and continue training or flying to maintain proficiency, both with the equipment and in your decision making. Don't let fear of FAA enforcement override making safe decisions in an emergency. And finally, keep the lines of communication with the FAA open. Help us help you stay safe.